Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to this channel. Today I wanted to give you a more specific view. Usually we talk about how to open a small business or start a business. Today I want to dive into more specifics on the retail side and give you my eight tips on how to open it. How eight tips on how to increase your retail sales. See, that's that's what I always do, how to open a, open a business. Today it's how to increase your retail sales. Weird phenomenon that Felicia and I have found. Anytime we're mopping, it could be a dead day, like without customers, consistent customers, for an hour. And if you start mopping, people come in your door. Cafes, small restaurants, grocery store, once that mop hits the floor, the business gods say, okay, go walk, have customers walk on it for them. So yeah, if you want to increase your sales, start mopping. So these are the top seven tips that come to me right now. There's probably a thousand that I've used in the last five years to increase our sales. And you know, it can go on and on. I can make 10 of these videos if we wanted to, but these are the best seven. Like, you know, for example, you've seen this where people will, that's just a buggy. That buggy is way too big for the store, but you know the trick, you know, get a bigger buggy. People psychologically feel like they have to fill it up and yeah, there's, there's so many tips and tricks that grocery stores use to trick you into spending more money or encourage you to spend you spend more money um, that, you know, we can go on all, on all day. They've come down, they've broken it down to a science to get you to spend as much as possible in their store that they can give away all those sale items almost for free at cost and they'll still make money off of you guys. So. Um, keep in mind anytime you go into a store everything is probably tracked they probably track your path they know what you grab they know what you put back it's coming down to a surveillance system where you know human behavior is so studied in order to extract as much money out of you as possible in business that uh, you know sometimes it takes someone to show you what they're doing in order to save you some money and this video can be used in that sense too, but yeah. Just know that there's a lot of psychology that goes behind getting you to spend. All right, so first things first, step number one, the easiest thing you can do to increase your sales, I would say on my estimate 15 to 20%, is just facing all your items. Everything needs to be lined up, front facing towards the customer with the labels all nice lined up, and you know kind of straight you know when you go down that cereal aisle and everything's just kind of picture perfect all facing towards you and you end up picking a little bit of this I'll try this I'll try that that is the intention everything is facing towards you you know nothing's kind of all scrambled around the shelves and things just end up popping a little better and you have a better access to pick them up so these things, um, you probably, if you've ever worked in retail, they might call it front facing, matrix, facing the shelves, even maybe just, you know, bringing everything forward. It doesn't need a name, it just needs to be done. These will increase your sales with the easiest uh, method I can possibly think of. So step number two to increasing your sales would be you want to be moving your inventory around every few months. Things that people streamline towards and pick up the same one or two things every single time. If you change that around on them, they end up going to other parts of your store that they may never have or never would have if you kept things in the same spots. So for example, the people that buy bananas will always streamline straight down the middle, pick up a banana and walk with the door. However, if we maybe move bananas to the other side, the other section of produce that we have here, they may be inclined to see something else that they like or find a product they were looking for that they didn't even know we had. People are accustomed to their habits so they don't tend to stray from them at all especially when shopping they'll stick to the same path the same few items that they always buy and head out the door. Your job is to not trick the customer but guide them into seeing your other products almost have them bump into something else so they know that there is these options that they may enjoy for the future or for the current uh, visit that they came in for. If at any time you enjoy this video, 
please hit the like button and subscribe down below. We try to bring the inside scoop of running your own business to you. Um, I think that is lacking in this sec sector where people run their own business and show you the reality behind doing that. And uh, just so you know, we uh, took everything we made from this channel created our own coffee line that we currently serve at the store and sell online. If you're interested in that, you can go down to 13grandcoffee.com. The link will be in the description box below. If you want to try the coffee that we serve every day that we're very proud of, um, yeah, it's in the link down below. And we appreciate that. And if not, just a simple like is fine. We love to provide the value for this channel. and. Uh, Hopefully uh, you guys uh, are able to open your own business or improve your own business. Number three is a actually very important one because it can really take you from slow months to very, very busy months if you participate in them. So step three can be a make or break for your store. You want to keep it fresh in here. You want to keep it kind of uh, exciting for customers. So that is where this step comes in and it's keeping up with the seasons and the holiday. You want to be able to have things that fit the seasons and the holidays. So, you know, Christmas cupcakes, Easter baskets, corn for the summer season, ice cream for the summer season. You need to follow those trends and fads in order to keep relevant in the community that you're currently operating your business in. You know, for us, Easter's coming up, we're a little bit, you know, not going crazy with for it, but you know, we're, you know, bringing in some Easter bunnies, some Easter chocolate, some eggs, mini eggs, everybody's favorite. You gotta keep up with that in order to keep, you know, it kind of fresh and exciting in here. Keep up with the seasons because that's where you end up making a bulk of your sales around Christmas, the holidays, Thanksgiving. Those are when people tend to splurge a little bit more. They have a lot more family parties. They're willing to try new things as long as they fit the seasons. Even cupcakes for St. Patty's Day. Every season, every holiday needs to be um, recognized in your store. And then related to that is step number four, events. You wanna be able to always have an event, at least once a month, I would say, where it's either, you know, your, your first second third anniversary we do those once a year you know we get the balloons out we do like a 10% off discount a raffle um, you want to keep it interesting in that way and then people are more invested in your business because it's like oh they've been around for three four five years they're part of the community now you just want to keep reminding people that you're here you're doing well and you know you're gonna be here for the long term other events I suggest really increase your retail sales if you do pop-up sample events with other business community other businesses in the community for example I would say a new business that open that is a producer of food is the perfect sample day event for you let's say someone is part of this company here the best way for people to try this and keep it consistent in your store is for them to bake it fresh and sample it that day and they'll find that you know about half the people that sample it will pick it up or buy it not this time but maybe the next time this not only brings in more sales for you because they're buying new products but it also brings in the following of that sample business so whatever customers they have most likely will come to their sample day and be aware of your store for the first time or you know a regular customer these are just Examples of the thousands of events you could possibly come up with that create excitement for your store. They keep it fresh, they keep it ex exciting. You can do National Baguette Day, you know, where you give a baguette to anyone who spends over $20. The opportunities are endless to keep it relevant in your store. It's up to you to be creative enough to attract that attention to that event that potentially brings you long-term customers. So another very important thing that can either turn off your customer from being a regular customer in your store is making sure everything is fresh. You don't want anything expired on your shelves. You don't want anything of low quality or anything moldy or dented up or anything like that. Everything has to be tip top. You know, even if you have to check the dry like grocery items like small things like this 
once a week just go around the store and see if anything's expired it's I know there's so much inventory in your stores that it seems almost impossible and you know at the end of the day it's worth it because when people pick up an expired item and they see the date they're kind of just turned off from the entire store they just have this feeling that oh you know other things might be old it's not very busy in here I don't know maybe they're hiding something like certain produce items aren't as fresh as they say so you really have to keep on top of the freshness of the store this increases your retail sales because it doesn't break the trust with the customer that they have to be weary when picking things up they're much more they have much more of a free will to grab and go without you know stalling and looking at every single date and it just gives them that feeling that whatever they're buying is going to be of the best quality so they're more willing to purchase a little bit more if needed I'll give you an example of where this happened at another store that i've visited i would never name names on this but they had a can on this on the shelf that was from 216. now obviously i understand things can get missed but at that point in age you're looking at seven to eight years old and if any customer saw that you will probably assume that there's a lot of things that are overlooked in this store. Another example of that is a customer showed the manager or owner a expired item in the store. And this has happened to me before and I'll simply say, oh, thanks for finding that. You know, we missed out. We must have missed it on our checks. Thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, we'll, be, we'll make sure to keep an eye on them. What this manager and owner decided to do was completely lose his mind and tell the person who gave it to them that you know why don't I come over to your house and check your fridge I'm sure you have expired stuff in there which is probably true because everybody I know has expired stuff in the fridge but you just can't say that like that's not gonna win you any customers they're probably never gonna come back don't take it personally you miss something you miss something take it off the shelf so step number six to increasing your retail sales I would say is the best thing when a customer is ready to buy something you are kind of conditioned yourself to upsell or cross sell other items to build that order now I'm not saying be pushy or be slimy but you know you want to make it a kind of an emotional thing where it's like oh you know I'm cooking tonight for um, my boss is coming over oh you know you want to get a nice olive oil for them okay well let's pick this one up this is a really nice one it actually goes good with these olives they're the same brand they pair perfectly if you put them in like a nice dish you know on the table and that gets the customer thinking you know what yeah my boss probably would like you know olives on the table or you know maybe I should try to add something else it doesn't have to be the olives but I'll add something else with this olive oil that I'm using to cook because I do need a few more things to make it kind of impressive you know I put that in their head like oh you want to impress your boss it's not pushy it's like a little joke and it usually works out where people are like yeah you know I probably should grab this or this it doesn't always work but it does build that order or you know for example when people come to the till with something I'll say oh you know this actually this pasta pairs perfectly with this sauce we just got in and I go grab it and show it to them sometimes they take it you know sometimes they don't and that's fine but when you go to McDonald's and you know you're asked to upsize or you're asked to try something new half the time well maybe not half the time but it does work sometimes and that's why they keep doing it if it didn't work they wouldn't do it correct so you need to get into that um, habit that gets people to you know maybe give something else else a chance in your store instead of always grabbing one or two things get them you know trying something else and then I'm telling you maybe five times out of ten the people that I upsell will come back in and be like thanks for telling me that it was so good let me buy it again or do you have any other recommendations on this or this and it kind of breaks that barrier where you're just selling because you're showing them the product they don't have to buy it you're just telling them it goes good with it it's almost a cooking direction so you know it's a win-win for everybody you get another sale they get to try something you know that they may like and they, may, they don't have to buy it again or they don't have to buy it at all but get into that motion where you break that barrier where you just throw things on the shelves and, and hope it sells because that won't work um, as effectively as you know someone explaining products someone you know 
you know, showing what a new, the new olive oil you got in is. It always takes kind of a little bit of a personal connection in a small store to get people to try items that they never had before. Okay, step number seven is social media marketing. We'll include email marketing in this. Email marketing simply, I would suggest this. When your customer is at the till purchasing, there's two options, print receipt or enter email. You can enter their email and let them know that you have you know, a newsletter that comes out once a week or an email that comes out once a week. So they're aware if they enter that email that they may get emails from you. I tell people that because I don't like signing my email into things and then getting bombarded with emails. If I'm signing my email in for a receipt, it's just for the receipt. But if they're signing their email, you let them know, hey, we have a promotional newsletter, check it out. Um, you'll be happy to see that we have some sales this week. And it's just, um, it's more honest and it honestly has people um, more engaged in the email because you told them about, about it. There was no trick here and they kind of know what to look for. So I think it has a better open rate when you explain that you do send out promotional emails. That's just my opinion on the email marketing. As for social media marketing, Felicia and I have probably sold over millions of dollars worth of inventory just by promoting products on our Instagram and Facebook for free. We've done some paid advertising on Facebook. That's a whole other story that I can get into in another video. But for social media, everything with food is so aesthetic naturally from Instagram and Facebook that there's a culture built around food. So you're, there's no problem when you advertise, you know, new products or um, new items that came in. But the one thing I notice is if you're willing to be in the picture with the product, your engagement probably comes up tenfold. Seeing the owner or workers in the photos with the you know store and the item gives a different kind of engagement. It's more of a connection. People need to see a face now on social media so they don't feel like they're advertised to. Um, so I'd suggest if you're going to post on social media, maybe every one to two times, one out of every two times, you actually are in the picture with the product or in the picture with your store. Um, it just has a better feel to it, I think. People engage more with a connection with a person in a picture. And usually this is how it works. Felicia and I will post a picture of a new item that you know just came in and we'll describe it a little bit on Instagram. And then around a couple hours later, people will come in, hey, do you have this item? And they'll literally show us our Instagram post and we'll show them where to go buy it. It's such an easy marketing technique and um, I think it works better than promoting any sales or anything on your Instagram or Facebook. I don't have any good responses with, you know, if I if I post this and I say three for five craft dressing, you know, I don't think anybody responds to that well. I've tried it, you get very low engagement. People don't want to be sold to on their Instagram. They want to see experience, they want to see people having fun, they want to see, you know, good food, but not just good food. They want to see people enjoying that good food. So you know, take, keep it in a balance. You don't have to be in every single picture, but I would suggest at a small local shop, being in the pictures really helps. I'm gonna end this one here, guys. If you like this video, I will make another one with another top 10, top seven tips, whatever it may be. There's so many that we can go into, but I'm gonna end this one here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we provided some value to you. That's about it.